Hello everyone, I'm Mr. Mocha Lover, and thank you for joining me here once again in TNO, playing as a beautiful Liberian Union right now. we got a couple things to go through, some events, and then we'll talk about some comments. So, permit alteration accepted. The proposed alteration to our construction permit, it has been accepted by the federal government, and we're once again cleared to begin work. The new road will ha now have the desired amount of lanes wanted by the Madrid City Administration, a miracle due to the bureaucracy that exists here, and yes, and or of course, still exists, led by... Back co-princes, the co-princes, but the start of the board conference. By and far the largest conflict present in the Triumvirate are the many border disputes that have sparked up in the Triumvirate between all three members for this problem to be resolved. There will be, of course, two full days dedicated to, to negotiating over the nature of these disputed territories. The event started with a noticeable lack of Iberian diplomats as they informed their hosts that they refused to attend it beforehand as, they're, as if they're holier than all of us. The Basbog, al Parizalan Turkes, took the podium with an oversized chart of the Eastern Mediterranean following it behind him among the rest of the entourage. He began to explain the convoluted ancient importance of Cyprus and Rhodes to Turkey and the demographics of the island, and particularly what Turks described as the overwhelming majority of ethnic pure Turks. The Italian-controlled islands of Rhodes and Cyprus have long been a thorn in Turkey's side due in part to the large minority of Turks, but also more importantly because of their vital strategic importance serving as inlets into the Aegean and Eastern Mediterranean. Furthermore, since the completion of Atlantoropa, several of these Italian islands have gained prominent land borders with the Turkish mainland. <clears throat> As the triumvirate deteriorates, and with the Italo-Turkish relationship becoming one of thinly veiled threats and backhand slaps instead of friends and allies, Turkish has become much more vocal regarding the issue of these rightful Turkish lands being denied union with the Turkish state. Our demands are clear. We only ask for what has been ours for millennia, were the words of Turkish on the proposed concessions. We will not back down, we will not fold, we will not stop until we have it. Our mind on what action Turkey will surely take should their actions or demands be refused. Looks like the Iberians aren't the only ones. It seems like Turkey really, really should get a lot of love because they have a lot of flavor here, at least in the beginning. Weakening grip, economic stagnation, they're national socialists. Um, yeah, I, I think Turkey should really, I hope they get a focus. I'm, I know there's a roadmap out there. I haven't looked at it in a while, but I really hope they do get a really nice, awesome focus. Tree where you have like Neo-Ottoman Empire or maybe you really want to go like communist or Marxist-Leninist or... Anything like that. Just something wild for Turkey. Just so many different wild paths. I think that would be really, really cool. I think Turkey could really use one. Because they're in the Triumvirate, which hopefully does get reformed eventually sometime. Hopefully there is some way you could save it, but we'll see what happens. But regardless, we're still playing as Spain and... Or, <clears throat> not Spain. Uh, the Iberian Union. Yeah. Siano refuses to negotiate. Siano shakes his head. We will not be bullied into giving up land, he says solemnly. We need those lands or islands as bases. We're more than willing to give you joint control over the base... Turkish cut him off, bastard. I knew it was a mistake coming here. You just want to continue your domination of the Mediterranean, using us as pawns. I'm going through with your empty promises. Predictable. Well, actually, you know, if, they, if they're willing to share them jointly, that's better than what they did with us. I mean, kind of, to a degree, I guess, maybe. But, alright, so, uh, you guys recommended that I go try to form the Iberian Federation, which is, which, which is what I want as well, to make sure that we keep the Union together. But... I actually had to look up like how to do that because there's a very good chance that the Iberian Union splits up into many, many different parts, which would not be very, very good. So let's see what we can do. We currently have $8.5 million here. I'm meeting in St. Julian's, though. The Bass Bug sat in his chair and leaned back, taking a heavy sip of his wine. You know it as well as me, Franco. Siano's not floating to either of our terms. Nothing penetrating that thick skull of his. All we have to do is show him we can cooperate. I'm telling you, this is how we can get to him. Franco looked disinterested and turned his gaze to the Mediterranean. Really? And what do you suggest we cooperate on? We aren't prone to working together, if you haven't noticed. Salazar attempted to butt in, but took his spoke before he could. Just open up a border conflict. You don't have to commit much. It won't be large, I assure you. Help me out on this one, or I, or I guarantee I will not have your back when the regime collapses. That again, Franco's attention. All right, I'll talk to some of my generals on I can't guarantee any. No, you can't guarantee anything, not without my permission. Franco is beginning to get frustrated with his Portuguese friend, but he cannot crack under pressure. You're right. Do you agree to this proposal, Salazar? Yes, let's call the generals. The secret meeting became public knowledge, though each leader refused to comment on the specifics. If there was one thing that the Triumvirate could, op could cooperate on, it was killing each other. Maybe we can find common ground, but right now we're trying to connect the islands and trying to finish up our starter focus tree. Let's go ahead and hand out more ration cards, though. <clears throat> Due to our inability to actively support the settlers of good Algeria, 
Most of them live in awful conditions. Buildings where families share a bunk bed and restrooms are used by dozens of people are very common. Worst of all, a lot of settlers aren't able to find a job and rely on ration cars to survive. Since the area is under undeveloped and the government can't provide jobs, the local authorities will now be able to expand the quality and quantity of ration cars that are distributed among the settlers. This way, we can ensure they survive and eventually claim all of Algeria for a glorious nation. That'd be very good. Oh, ooh, and... Uh, we got one day. Okay, so here we go. So now we have the options of really trying to build the dam as fast as possible. The workers are still angry, which I don't like. Like, trust me, I don't like it that the workers are angry. If I was a worker, I would not want that. They're probably actually pretty close to striking. So in the meantime, my goal is to probably invest and dig the energy plant tunnels because it makes might make them more pissed off and increases the total cost of upgrade expenses. But that probably would get us done faster. Maybe, maybe not. So... My goal... Ooh, reduce the maintenance cost of the dam. Ooh! Ooh, maintenance cost of the dam goes down. Upgrade the cranes. I want to do all that stuff. Hmm. Well, first, what we got to do... Decrease the workers' anger. I want to upgrade the security, maybe. Uh, let's do security first. Let's do that. We can probably increase the budget for them. I'm going to invest more money into them. So we still have 8.5. And then I'm going to dig the plants. Because if we can help their anger and help them become less angry then let's go ahead and dig the energy plant tunnels so this will allow the hydroelectric infra infrastructure to be built and i want to finish this off as fast as possible Ooh, we can also hire more technicians let's reinforce the scaffolding just because i hear you get a lot of good bonuses once you complete the dam so i want to get those bonuses and stop spending so much money on this also we're not at 43 3.5% anymore, we're at 45%, so we already have some progress, which is awesome. The Malta Conference has been bombed, oh no. The first reports that reached Rome were sporadic and disjointed. A fire had broken out in the city of Burgo. The Turks had prepared a trap and invaded Malta. The Kriegs Marine were shelling the Fort St. Angelo. Someone tried to shoot El Duce. Attempts to verify anything were unsuccessful, as the phone lines to the conference site were all down. Some tried to formulate all this into a single narrative, but it was so self-contradictory that it was fruitless. Anyone could do... All anyone could do was wait and pray for good news. Thankfully, it was just a wait of only several minutes before it was confirmed that the Duce was alive and may be returning to Rome post haste. The clear details also began to trickle in. A bomb went off in Fort St. Angelo, obliterating the conference room, and both the Babsburg and the Cadillo survived unscathed due to good timing. The identity of the bomber is unknown, and, and if it was done by any of the triumvirate's other member states, it was unlikely they will take responsibility. Some in Rome have already begun pointing fingers at Iberia and Turkey, and there are some undoubtedly those who accuse us. While tensions were high going on in the meeting, they are now absolutely astronomical. The bomber's goal was to sow chaos in the Mediterranean, then he succeeded just beyond his wildest dreams, just when we couldn't get any word. I wonder who did that. I wonder which country probably did that. Hmm, my money is on a certain OB nation. Hmm, I wonder who could do such a thing. But also, so, like I said earlier, we wanted to go with the Iberian Federation. I, it was recommended, maybe not so much in the comments, but from the guides I've seen, that we want to increase Franco's popularity as much as possible. Now, we, we like Salazar, but we'll see what happens. But Iberia and Turkey blame Italy with draw delegates. Unsurprisingly, out of all the members of the Triumvirate, nobody's willing to take responsibility for the bombings. Though Italy claims that they had nothing to do with the bombings, as a zero incentive to do so, this has not stopped Iberia and Turkey blaming the Italians for the whole fiasco. Both Iberia and Turkey have withdrawn their delegates from the conference, stating that it is clear that they are not safe for them to be there. Time to end the charade, and construction planning finalized. After a long period of bureaucratic delays and general pitfalls, it seems that the construction of the Outer Madrid Road is finally proceeding smoothly. Senior contractors and civil servants have created multiple detailed models, which all currently projected to be finished in several months, allowing us to finally move on to other, more grand parts of our infrastructure overhaul plan. Let's hope it really pays off in a few months. So I'm going to go ahead and try to do everything for Franco first. And then we'll go to Salazar, but we'll see what happens. Hand out more of the ration cards. Brazil were, wins the World Cup Finals. Congratulations to the champions. Good job, guys. And bureaucratic reform. Uh, reinforcements. Due to the nature of the Algerian situation, our troops in the region have a hard time running the administration. Bureaucrats there are lacking, and as such, Commando Militar Alg Algerino can barely be called a government. This causes reports to be scarce, numbers to be wrong, and most of the time causes problems with properly applying the law. To help get the region prosper, we will send a big group of civilian servants, or civil servants, disguised as settlers so that they can take the reins and create a proper administration in Algeria. We lose manpower, and the group gets some uh, political power down there, which would be good. So, the collapse of the triumvirate. Okay, it was only a matter of time, and we are independent now. Oh, I did not realize that the French state was in the unity pact. Okay, so leaving the triumvirate. With the cast catastrophic breakdown and dissolution of the triumvirate, Iberino finds itself alone in a drift. Significant reforms may come into play as the Caudillos determine which course of action is necessary. Cool. 
Franco will attempt to deal with the problems facing Iberia. We stand alone. It is what it is. A little bit of debt after the triumvirate. Great. And now we can do Who Needs Friends or A World of Acquaintances. Now, when I play this by myself off screen, um, I went down this path and it seemed okay. But I think what we'll probably go with... Obviously, we can do the middle path regardless of which side we choose. Ooh, I really want to go with this. Focus on us sounds like a really good thing for stability. But what about a world of acquaintances? I was, it was recommended that we might do that. Be very somewhat diplomatic. So with the betrayal of our former close allies, we now stand alone on the world stage, surrounded by leering enemies, ready to take advantage of any weakness we may show. Some have argued that it is now necessary to push for isolation, having never to rely on anyone else again to avoid the same diplomatic catastrophe, and to push for a strong unified state capable of withstanding external force. Officials on the government have, however, realized that such a pursuit would ultimately leave Iberia in a far more vulnerable position. We must, therefore, look towards establishing ties around the world to scout out new diplomatic possibilities. Positive relations with as many nations as possible could be hugely beneficial to trade, security, and diplomacy. More construction debt is but a number, and you know what? Right now, we don't have any sort of things called oil crises or crises, so that's okay. Ooh. Iberia after the Triumvirate. The dissolution of the Triumvirate has been a wake-up call for Iberia, with the government scrambling to keep the Union afloat. In the wake of its collapse, Caudillo Franco has taken it upon himself to lead the effort and making long overdue changes to improve Iberia's internal stability, as well as strengthening our, her position in the Mediterranean. Despite being sorely needed, making these decisions will doubtlessly make Franco new enemies across the Iberian society. Were Franco's popularity to fall significantly during this time, trying time, the stability of the nation could be in jeopardy while he is needed the most. I was recommended, or we thought, that we might publicly commend Opus Dei. Uh, infiltrate pro-democracy groups. Yeah. Algerian separatism. We'll probably try to do all this stuff. Maybe. We'll see what happens. Reshuffle troops. Let's go with that one. Let's see what happens. We get more political power, worsen the church opinion. Maybe that's not a good thing to do, but whatever. Trade debate. Join Vert Tariffs. So, with the collapse of the German Rip, many of Iberia's former trade partners have suddenly declared themselves hostile to the nation. Today, in their meeting in Galicia, the two Caldeos discussed the possibility of levying tariffs on Italy and Turkey. While they generally agreed that the tariffs were a decent idea, the discussion was quickly bogged down by fierce agreement or argument or exactly what pro products had the highest priority to levy tariffs on. Spanish and Portuguese institutions both provided conflicting data, which of much was severely out of date. Once it was settled, no comprehensive agreement had been reached. Can't they agree on anything? Probably not. Well, maybe a few things, but not too much. Still angry. It's fine. Uh, workers will decrease their anger, which is good, which will happen within a week, while so we can get more stuff done. Oh, we actually have a division. Great. Now, it's also recommended that we make lots of guns. Because you never know. You never, 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 never know what might be needed in the future, especially to put down criminal organizations. Oh, look at that. 20 out of 20. 3 out of 20. That's so nice. So nice. I could spend more money in the dam. But we're already doing this stuff. <clears throat> I think we'll be okay for now. Trade debate, tariff sourcing. With the utter indecision of the previous debate, the Caldeos have moved on to a new topic, namely precisely where the money from potential tariffs would go. Again, a consensus was not reached, with precise ratios not being worked out. The issue of the Union government not receiving any sort of re reasonable amount of funding appears to be likely to persist indefinitely as the Caldeos clash over what factors shall determine which administration will collect and distribute tariff money. We needed that. Oh boy. Hmm, and support for failing coastal ventures. Bureaucratic opinions of... Hmm. Intellectuals of Franco. Is this... Are we supposed to be doing this? Uh, I mean, yeah, we got Franco, Salazar, Franco, Salazar, nothing. Salazar, lean towards Franco. Remove a Spanish... Uh, ooh... Decry Italian encroachment. Mm-hmm. Natives. Do the natives matter? Italy's going to war. Hmm. Downsize the administration. Our expenses will decrease a little bit. That might be okay. War in the desert. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. We shuffle all commander troops in Algeria. Ooh, I don't know, man. Mm. Stability of the nation could be in jeopardy when he's needed the most. Cool. So we did that. Now we can go ahead and do separate ties with the ex allies. Help Italy. Help Turkey. Relieve our troops. Retrieve our troops. 
No more shared intelligence. Immigrants under watch versus expel Italian advisors. Pull our investments from Italy. Come back home. Oh man, I don't know which one to do, so we'll talk, think about that a little later on. Let's visit the Balkans. Eh, no, they're currently at war. We must look to strengthen our diplomatic position quickly, lest we become prey to foreign encroachment. One of the places the regime is currently looking to is OFN Alliance, which despite its center of power across the Atlantic could ensure us a better position in Europe. We may run into a few small problems due to the structurally different political cultures that lie between us and them. However, we do believe that Americans will prioritize pragmatism while meeting with us. For them, we, this could be a great opportunity to encroach peacefully on Germany's sphere of influence. We shall initially hold back high hopes and just seek to establish cordial relations in the future. This may be able to go much further than this. <clears throat> oh man, I don't know about this stuff. <sighs> Worse than bureaucrats? I don't want to ruin my our opinion. 0.87 a day, because that's not bad. Trade debate, though. Port ownership. <clears throat> After the disastrous attempt at negotiating tariffs, the Cadillos have taken another topic to be in to be tormented. The matter of the day is now port, port ownership, namely the question of which administration owns the national ports. While Salazar insists, insists that regional governments should be in control of the ports, Franco argues that all ports should be under the direct control of the Union itself. After nearly three hours of argument, the decision was unable to come to a satisfactory conclusion, and this has been delayed until the next meeting. Until then, Iberia's ports will be held in uncertain hands. At least it won't be something. At least it wasn't something more important. Oh God. So, the military is fully Franco aligned, which is not bad. So, oh, we got some civilian. Yes. Yes. Military stuff. Uh, I always get more cap. We can use more output. So, oh, let's look, look. Dead is but a number, right? Go even higher. Why not? Only a billion year before any sort of crisis happens. Keep spending money. Make us more some civilian. Fa That's not bad. It's not bad at all. All right. Oh. Wait, what happened to my political power? Um. Oh, trade debates. Railway gauges. Railway gauges. The final topic in the Cadillo's hellish trade conference is a matter of trade railroad gauge. Certain obscure railroads in inner Spain are unable to support railroad cars wide enough to hold standardized shipping containers. Thus, Franco argues federal funding must be granted to expand the railroad tracks through regulation length. Salazar, however, does not agree, stating that the shipping maritime containers through inland Spain is useless, when containers could simply be unloaded and proceeded on Portuguese soil. The esoteric argument managed to last longer than any other and end in bitter indecision. Was Iberia meant to be this dysfunctional? Well, maybe. Oh, so th now they're upset, which is, well, not bad. And there goes the Republic of Yugoslavia. The world's looking like a mess. I'll be honest, it's looking like a big old mess. <clears throat> so I was thinking, um, I want to do all this stuff Actually, intellectual support doesn't have a preference. Well, let's invade them first, I guess. Why not? But, see, we have the military is fully Franco aligned. I don't mind doing reshuffling troops there then. And then doing that. Oh no, that's Salazar. Goes to Morocco. Oh crap. I don't know. We'll see what happens. I don't have to take all these, but we'll see what happens. Taxation debate, foreign taxation. So the conference on taxation has begun with the most crucial item on the list, namely taxing foreign assets. Iberia, due to its weak federal tax code, has a reputation for as a tax haven equitable to the worst of the West Indies. In this debate, several schools of thought have clashed, with some arguing to end Iberia's status as a de facto tax haven, while others believe that any taxation at all will lower investments and make the country worse off than it started. In the end, no side prevailed, as Cadillo's Franco and Salazar were split on the issue of potential tax discrimination by country of origin. Well, that was kind of important, but you know, what else can we do now? Crossing the pond, visiting America, though. Despite the relatively cold feelings those with those across the Atlantic, it is important that we begin to take steps towards creating a more amicable relationship in the future. With the triumvirate having broken apart, we must look outwards to find new trade partners, as well as submitting our position as a real competitor to the Italians and Turks. Our first priority is to meet with the representatives of the Organization of Free Nations, making the trip overseas to personally discuss trade relations and to generally improve our image in the eyes of both the government and the public. Caudillo Franco has made the final preparations and is ready to begin forging a new path for Iberia's future. The first stop on the Caudillo tour is to head to D.C., capital of the U.S., and epicenter of the OFN. From there, he shall begin our tour throughout the Americas and hopefully find new friendships. Let's go. And we should do the same thing with our Latin American friends. We've long and we have had long and strong cultural ties to all of South America. Uh, with the Portuguese and Spanish Union into Iberia, the current state holds a lot of opportunities in this region at its fingertips. The abandonment of the triumvirate means that we can finally begin to look beyond our immediate European shores for further alliances. Many visits to the continent that we brought great classical civilization to will have be planned. Will have to be planned. The Latin American countries of Brazil, Argentina, Mexico, and maybe even Cuba hold great potential for this plan as, as secondary powers in their own right. We would be able to forge strong economic and military ties if our diplomacy is successful. Furthermore, dealing with the nations which clearly align the OFN sphere might integrate or integr 
gratiate us even more with the Americans. Yes, we'll see what happens. I want to spend more money here, but we gotta wait. A Cadillo in the capital. Upon his arrival, Franco was greeted with a large procession of American and Iberian flags, with a huge crowd having gathered to observe the occasion. Stepping out of the, from the plane, a marching band struck up a beautiful rendition of the Iberian national anthem, and Prince Pristinely, uniformed men of the U.S. Army, stood by by side with a hand-picked honor guard of the Iberian military. There, in front of hundreds of cameras and thousands of cheering spectators, Franco shook hands with none other than President Richard Nixon. For the first time, Iberian and American leaders met in person, the historic moment being broadcast live on TV in both nations. After the photo opportunity, Franco rode in grandiose motorcade throughout the streets of Washington, D.C., where several short tours were conducted, finally before coming to the White House lawn. A final photo op was held, and both the Cadillo and President made their way inside to begin discussions regarding the future relations between Iberia and America. Ah, cool. Praise the military, improve foreign leaders' opinion of Franco, our, our GDP growth will increase. We want more business. Improve the businessman opinion of Franco. All right, so let's see. So right now, the businessman leads towards Salazar, and we want to increase the opinion of Franco. Praise the military. Improve the foreign leader's opinion of Franco. Foreign leaders. Foreign leaders leading towards Franco. If we get to lower the influence of Salazar, that would probably be good. Let's talk about business and help our GDP, which I think would be great. I can invest more in here. Only a billion a year in deficit. That's all. And which we will cut this down eventually. But we got to make sure we got a massive industrial sector. Ah, oh, the great white north. With the trip to the DC having fi finally gone smoothly, Franco said his goodbyes to the Americans and climbed aboard his plane once again, this time trying to fly northwards to meet the Canadian government. There, the Cabildo was met with similar pomp and circumstance, though this time the tour of Ottawa was cut short as the Prime Minister hoped to get down to business as soon as possible. A long speech was given by the Canadian PM once Franco was settled in at Parliament Hill, giving praise to the Cabildo for taking the time to meet with Canada on a personal basis. Wow, look at that. Industry, 20 out of 20, 17 out of 20. That's so nice. Despite the warm greetings and generally friendly attitude, there was something that had been plaguing the trip to uh, Canada since the Cadillo's arrival. One of the major concerns for maintaining a friendship with the Canadians was the ongoing struggle between the Quebec independence movement and the Canadian government. The Catholic bond is strong, and the Cadillo was reminded to take careful steps in choosing how to best approach the issue. Look at that growth. Instead of 2.4 or 2.5, it's now 3.1. That's great. All right, condemn the terrorism. Worsen regional nationalistic opinions of Franco. Talk about business. Ooh. Because I do know later on we do get things about terrorism and we want to disable terrorist events. Uh, businessmen. I mean, right now, businessmen don't have a preference. Worsen regional nationalists. Let's see. Colonial. Regional nationalists don't have a preference. So they don't care. That's okay. Let's talk about business. Why not? Does that help us with this? Not really too much, but uh, 3.1, 2.58, not bad, not bad. I like these. I like these events. Just exploring, seeing new nations, making sure we have good relations with everyone seems like a pretty good idea. Ooh, oh boy, what do we do here? Decry Italian entrenchment. Ooh, remove a Spanish public holiday. Let's see. Silent majority doesn't have a preference. Colonial settlers. If we piss off colonial settlers or bureaucrats, it doesn't matter. Co bureaucrats. Bureaucrats? Might as well. Downsize the administration. If they don't support us, then that's okay. So, income taxation. <clears throat> Another dreaded topic of discussion was the potential of a federal income tax. While well, general, general support amongst the Opus Dei economists recently allowed into the government, the Cadillos are still bitterly split on the issue. Salazar, even the, ever the corporatist, refuses to agree with any sort of concrete estimate on a tax amount or collection mechanism. Thus, once more, an idea sinks into the pits of a bearing government and is forever lost. An absurd display. It is what it is. You know what? Screw it. We're, I'm going to invest more money in here then. I'm tired of waiting. we got to spend money to get this stuff, stuff done. Uh, let's see. Reduce maintenance costs. That might not be bad. Upgrades to quarters. Go ahead and... Mm, it's going to increase their anger, which I don't like. So let's reduce their anger if possible. Because they're upset. We don't want them upset. They were angry. They're only upset. I want them to be content. So this way we can plan things out as smoothly as possible. Things cost so much. Spain is in such a weird place right now. Only a billion a year in debt. That's okay. Actually, we get more political power because of that. Let's see. Ah, federal tax distribution. The grand debate on taxation has finally come to around where to where. Precisely, the money from a federal tax will go. There are numerous proposals such as corporate subsidies, business stimulus, the Gibraltar Dam, and military expansion. However, neither party is willing to give up on their own interests. As the fifth day of debate concludes, the only concession made is a solitary funding break for increasing the budget of Moroccan police forces. with a necessary consensus. Cool. Oh, God. I, I, I need more political power, man. 
Uh, let's see. So, like we said, bureaucrats, colonial settlers. Native's opinion. How did they think? Native's opinion. Do we even care about the natives? They don't have a preference. Uh, silent majority, regional nationalists. They don't care. Native's opinions. We like we said. We, they don't care. Settlers. Uh, colonial settlers are fully settled. Are not sadly the most radical retornados. Yes. Go ahead and do that. Ah, our Latin American friends, great, I love it. Non-Italian Catholics, let's do Journey to the East. In a search for a better, to further nations, which we may be able to develop better relations with, we have come to Eastern Europe, a region particularly ravaged by the German menace, Hungary. A staunch former ally of the Reich was offered up as simple prey to the Romanians. Furthermore, their economy was utterly ransacked by the economic crash of the 50s. Romania fared a little better, though. Yet, yeah, the animosity created by the territorial disputes... <coughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. And a bitter rivalry relieves the two nations weak and too divided to stand against a possible future en encroachment. If we were to open diplomatic channels, we may be able to both strengthen their position and our own by removing some of the hazards of isolation in the foreign sphere. Let's try to help both nations out, but let's visit Latin America. It is a region that is often ignored by the global players, but Caduio Franco has insisted that we shall not make the same mistake. Iberia is deeply ethnically tied to the region, and her influence can be seen all throughout. This puts us in a unique position when it comes to taking business and diplomacy because of our shared common heritage, and thank God we won't have to use any more translators. Woo! The main countries on the agenda are Argentina, Brazil, Mexico, and Cuba, so Franco has a long journey ahead of him. It is important that we solidify our cordial relations with these nations and further our econ economic ties with them for the good of Iberia and the Latin world as a whole. Furthermore, we can utilize our ties with Cuba to gain influence in the OFN should we want to do so. Let's go. Now, it's interesting. Now, we're still Franco-led. If we had Salazar, would, he, would the event be geared towards Salazar? I would imagine so, and they'd probably end up going to Brazil maybe more. El Rio de la Plata. As part of our Amer Latin American journey, uh, Franco has reached the Argentinian capital of Buenos Aires. It is obvious as soon as Franco set foot off the plane why Buenos Aires is called the Paris of South America. Whether it is the Palace of Congress or the Casa of Rosada, the beauty of the city is a sight to be seen, and they frankly have us to thank for it. While traveling throughout the city, the Cut Yo engages with many of the local activities, such as listening to opera and stunningly crafted Teatro Colón, and walking through its gorgeous botanical garden. But enough of the pleasantries. Time has come for business as we must decide what the main purpose of our trip is. We can either talk business with the Argentinians in the hopes that we can strengthen our economic ties with the country, or we can meet with the local Iberian community leaders. The latter would show Iberians at home and abroad that the Iberian government cares about them and could help solidify a regime as protector of the Iberian people worldwide. Talk about business. Ooh, I like that. Or approve silent majority. Ooh, silent majority. Hmm. Hmm. They are not aligned. Businesses don't have a preference. Ooh. Ooh. It seems like if I go with talk about business, I, we, if I focus on that so much, then we might get market liberals eventually. I'm not really sure. What I do want to do, though, is this. We can meet with Iberians with, after we choose... Uh, worse than business. Oh, that is true there. Talk about business. Hmm... Because I do want to go reformist eventually. And the selling majority doesn't have a preference, so this doesn't hurt our relations with them. And approved business relations? Day of the Union. Ooh. Today is a wondrous summer day as everyone across the Union enjoys a public holiday to celebrate the anniversary of our two nations being drawn together into a one mighty whole. Franco gave a rousing speech before an adoring crowd in both Portuguese and Spanish. At the same time, the Salazar also appeared and gave a speech calling for all peoples of Iberia to throw themselves into the great task of restoring the greatness Iberia once held. Yes, improved stability. That would be great. So, foreign leaders are leaning toward him. Colonial settlers, Salazar, church leans towards us, the military likes us. The Amazon. The business in Argentina is concluded, and it is now time for Franco to go to Brazil and visit the capital city of Rio de Janeiro. Once a court of our Portuguese brothers, Rio has somewhat deteriorated since the days of the Braganza dynasty. The slums they call favelas are a blight on the centuries on the city's otherwise beautiful skyline, and even though the tour kept the Cadillo far away from them, their effect on the city's aura was, imme was immeasurable. Nevertheless, beauty still shown in the city with Franco's visit to the impressive Biblioteca Nacional, one of the largest libraries in the world, and the Paso de São Cristóvão, the beautifully crafted old imperial palace of the Braganazas. Once the tour had concluded, it was time for a ca the Cadillo to decide what the focus of the trip should be. We could either talk business with the Brazilians or meet with the president Julesino uh, Kubeshenk. Talking business with the Brazilians has the potential to yield many rewards as they are in possession of a vast array of natural resources with a decent industrial sector to go with it, and improving trade ties between our nations could bring the riches of the Amazons to Liberia once again. On the other hand, meeting with the president could help improve our relations or diplomatic ties with the Brazilians, which would help mean having the most powerful country on the continent as a potential ally should we wish to involve ourselves further in South America. 
I like the business too much, man. I'll be honest. Because we're going to ruin our relations with them, and this will help out Spain in the long run. Hopefully this doesn't matter too much, but mm, we'll see what happens. Nah, they don't really have a preference still. But, hmm. 24.58, not bad. Ah, back in Nueva España. Now it's time for Franco to visit the oldest capital in Latin America, Mexico City. Ever since we built it for four centuries ago, Spanish influence can be seen in all areas of the bustling metropolis. Our kings are preserved in their statues, millions of followers visit the cathedral and churches that we built, and the country's elite reside in our palaces. It is through this that we must consolidate our economic ties and cooperate in a long-standing tradition of helping develop the country in a way that developed our own too. In spite of this, the presence of Japanese Zaibatsis in the country cannot be understated and it is because of this, the fact, that we must weigh up whether to focus on meeting with the representatives of the Zaibatsus and engage in joint projects with them, or whether to meet with local Mexican businessmen to work directly with Mexican firms. The former would allow us to utilize more economies of scale as the Zaibatsus have a larger pool of money to use for development than the Mexicans as well as helping us draw closer to the Japanese should we want to create stronger ties with them. However, the latter would mean that we can gain more influence in the country and would later go to further to endear the Mexicans towards us. Either way, we can only focus on one of the two so it's up to Franco to make that choice. Uh, let's worsen relationships. Our reserves will receive an influx of cash. Talk with the Mexican businessmen. I think we'll go with that. You know, it's a little bit less money. I don't want to worsen relationships with the businessmen now, so... And I'm sure this doesn't do too much, right? Yeah, so it doesn't do much for us. So, 3.1... Oh! Federal Tax Collection Authority. So, as with all things in Iberia, the worst is yet to come, and for now, the time is to debate the Federal Tax Collection Authority. For reasons related to regional autonomy, the issue has been heavily debated, and a conclusion was unable to be reached. A conclusion was, of course, still not reached, though. Equal expansion of Spanish and Portuguese tax collection agencies was shut down, shut down by Salazar, as a change would require cross-regional jurisdiction to be given to tax uh, collectors purchasing regionally taxed goods in other regions. A strong federal tax authority was also shut down, as it was determined not to have enough force backing it up in case of tax evasion. Due to this gridlock, any the tiny tax collection agency of Iberia will remain dysfunctional, and this becomes usual. And so, the odd one out. Even though it is home to communists, Havana is a beautiful city, and due to its proximity and ties to America, developing ties with the government could position closer to the OFM. The city truly is a set to behold, and like with Mexico City, we can be thankful for that. Franco got the chance to see the city in all its majesty from atop the Fortazella de San Carlos de la Cabana. With the city itself, Cadillo Franco did his prayers in Havana's cathedral, received a private viewing of the Alicia Alonso Ballet in the Gran Teatro de la Havana, and got to relax and drink coffee in San Francisco Square. However, the Franco did not come to Havana to sightsee, but rather to establish Iberia's new foreign policy. Franco could either meet with Castro and seek to establish diplomatic ties with Cuba, or meet with the most influential church leaders in Cuba. If we were to meet with Castro, it would help us align with the OFN should we choose to and could open up economic opportunities with the Cubans. However, if we meet with the church, it would be a sign to all the faithful that we look after Catholics worldwide and help improve the opinion of the government from the more zealous members of our society. Meet with Castro? Ooh, that does not look good. Sell the majority. Meet with the church. I like bonuses or benefits. I don't like negative things. 24.7? Well, that didn't help us that much in terms of uh, that. GDP growth still remains stagnant. We got mass production methods, which is not bad. Uh, 1960, cap growth. Let's grab that one next. That would be very good to do. Military austerity. Um, as much as I want to output more, the budget probably isn't looking great now. Well, it's actually not looking too bad. And military debate. Uh, we could... That did nothing, so okay. Military debate. In general, while the militaries are fairly overfunded, our training sector is extremely weak. Routinely, there's not enough ammunition to be properly used in training camps, and shot count limitations have to be imposed on trainees. This issue was brought up between the Cadullos and miraculously passed, almost. An issue with funding for various training camps being biased towards Spanish locations led to the infamous Portuguese veto being applied and a furious bout of argument in the chamber. Franco accused Salazar of wanting the Germans to be able to use it or take Iberia easily and has nearly led to be restrained physically. I love this so much. Uh, we can invest further here, but not yet, actually. And they're upset, so, which is fine. Um, let's see. Franco, fully Franco aligned, leans that way, lean Franco, fully Salazar aligned. I think we're pretty much out of those at, like, Salazar. Hmm. Let's reshuffle command of troops in Algeria, maybe. Get political power, but we'll go ahead and do that, just because we're hopefully get... When Salazar goes to visit high command, I can make him do poorly, so Franco gets higher opinion. That's why I want to do that. Oh, man. We could probably do that now, actually. Bureaucrats. Oh, man. I might make a 
bad choice here. That could be not good for us. Uh, let's get to the high command. Let's have Salazar go ahead. Well, let, let, let's finish this first, and then we'll do this. Journey to the east? Why not? Lords of Arabia. The Middle East is a region filled with many an avid opponent and angry detractor of the Italian Empire and resurgent Turks. <clears throat> With both of our former allies abandoning the triumvirate, it only seems fair that now that we make use of these tensions to weaken the position in case the current cool relations develop into something more sinister. One such particular focus is Arabia, a feudalistic state united by Saudi clan. The country has seen tremendous economic growth within the discovery of large oil deposits and have made it a target of many diplomatic missions. We should also move quickly to build up our own relations with the aristocracy of the shifting sands and sprouting oil. It could be greatly, greatly beneficial to our economy and hence national security if we are able to gain favorable terms of the oil trading. We cannot fall behind the other Mediterranean powers. Very, very good. So, sorry about that. I didn't go blow my nose. Just a little bit. So, visiting the Balkans in the world, there are two main groups, the influencer and the influence. While the influencer holds more power, the influence can play around this to their benefit and due to the detriment of their neighbors. This behavior is best observed in the Balkans, where countries have feuded with one another for centuries. Some are better at the game than others and have their independence to show for it. Salazar believes it is time for Iberia to participate in the game. There are few countries not yet dominated by the two powers who can test in the region, Germany and Italy, and creating ties with these independent countries will be important towards new foreign policy, and let us go. Ooh, I really don't want to screw this up. I really don't. But whatever I do, might affect us, might not, so... <sighs> oh, talk to the bishops. The church leans towards Franco. <sighs> I want to say I want to do Salazar first, first, just because I could probably screw up easier than doing the right thing for Franco. But I could do you in Hungary. Salazar found himself in Budapest, meeting with a modest but dedicated group who had arrived to receive him. The ambassador and his entourage were friendly enough, and were still led by Franco. But, when offered a tour of the Hungarian capital, to be polite, Salazar gladly accepted. The historical sites were impressive, and it was clear the Hungarians leaned on their legacy for its sightseeing value. After a long while, though, the tour was concluded, it had taken far longer than anticipated, and only a limited amount of time had remained before the state visit was, of course, over. It was planned that there would be both discussions about commercial and trade affairs, as well as a more publicized meeting between leadership to be leveraged for public relations. While the opening for a true meeting is past, there is still time to discuss business. If trade deals are not particularly enthusing, then it would be possible to praise the Hungarian government in order to thaw the ice for later relations. Talk about business. Trade deals are not enthusing. Praise the government. Uh, of Salazar. Um, hmm. And Romania. We get a small boost. I'm focusing really heavily on the budget, which might be a good thing, might not be a good thing. We'll see what happens. In Romania, after a short flight to Bucharest, Salazar left to enjoy the sights. Being eager to get to business, he quickly moved on with the trip's agenda. Press relations, miscell miscellaneous meetings, and more occupied the Cadillo's day. The most important of these lighter actions was the arranging of a higher-up meeting on short notice in order to strengthen diplomatic ties. It was only a matter of time killing time until then. Once the time comes, there will be no time to delay. There needs to be a concise, pre-prepared plan of discussion. Two proposals have taken the spotlight. The meeting could either be about business and trade, establishing further economic ties, or the meeting could be about the king himself. While not as economically profitable, the more personal touch of talking with the king could serve to break the ice, creating the groundwork for further relations. Um, I, I like the boost, man. Hmm, further ties. You know what, let's try to do further ties. Let's try that just a little bit. I've not done that yet. So, military debate, funding, allocation. The state of the Iberian army is objectively awful. That no party can deny. However, the time has come to potentially resolve that. The consensus breaks, it, breaks down, though. Today in A Coruña, uh, the negotiations for increasing funding to the Iberian army broke down in spectacular fashion as bickering and com military commanders from the Spanish and Portuguese armies flooded the stage with papers stating that their funding was far more important. As the Cadillos accept these claims, it appears that the Iberian army shall once again be sidelined. Hopefully, the Germans won't invade anytime soon. But we'll see what happens. Uh, let's see. So, we just did that. It's mostly Franco aligned. Let's go have Fal Salazar visit the High Command first and see what happens. And then, ooh, okay, people front, who cares? Worsen businessman Franco, worsen it. I want to do all these. This is probably not a good idea. Move a Spanish public holiday? That's probably a bad idea. Let's do that, though. Franco, Salazar, Franco, Salazar, no one cares. <laughs> oh, man. Ooh. What to wear? The old man's face reflected not just the weakening capacity of his tired and overworked body, but also his inner fears. As he stared deeply into the mirror, looking for small imperfections, just like it with his paperwork, he began to brush away a small crease that he must have forgotten to iron out in the, of the military uniform he was wearing. 
The uniform of the Iberian army. How could he defeat his greatest fear, militarism, as personified by his Spanish counterpart? If not by it all, at least trying to shape into something less without any, if not possibly useful. However, it spoke against his entire nature and persona he had so carefully crafted over the years. After all, was he not the moderate of to Franco's delusional grandeur? The question is now, should he try to become more of an iron-fisted dictator, at least for a show, or stick with his usual statement appearance? The uniform will press them. Oh, crap. Hmm... Become more of an iron fisted dictator, and at least for sure, stick with this. Let's go with stick with this suit. Let's see what happens. Oh man, I don't want to screw this up. The speech begins though. If there's one thing Salazar could always fall back upon, it was his eloquence and strength at the public speaking. For all of his animosity towards Hitler, he had so admired the way to memorize and work an audience. So Susan Caudillo walks slowly towards the podium, all eyes in the room on him again. With only the sound coming courtesy of the den of the living city outside the steadfast walls of the palace, as he stood up to the wooden roadstrum or podium, he looked down briefly at the collection of notes he held in his hands. He was surprised to see them shake slightly. Age was beginning to get to the worst of him. He quickly recovered again, placing both arms first across his chest while surveying the assembled men and then onto the podium himself. He had gained their fixation, and it was time to begin. Further resources, improved military position or opinion of Salazar. Uh, army officialism will slowly begin to approve or start with vague platitudes. Platitudes it is. On the issue of minority groups. The next topic was an uncomfortable one for him to address considering the room was in. The room he was in. No matter how this would be played, he would most likely lose. He sly sighed to himself briefly, and then began his tirade against the terrible terrorism that swept the Union. How all these so-called freedom fighters dared to undermine such needed stability in Iberia, not caring in the slightest about the consequences of real people living in their ordinary lives. Clearly, these dastardly scum had to be expunged from that nation like the parasites they were. Yet, how is this to be done effectively when most of them came from minority groups which currently still enjoy the protection of the Union? The question of how to approach the next part of the speech was not an easy one for the old man. Should he push for a harsher policy towards minorities in order to safeguard national security, or take a more moderate approach in the process, most likely losing a hefty amount of political power to his more hardline Spanish counterparts? Their terrorist sympathizers, a hardline is needed. They do not represent the people. Oh, we lose ugh, political power, that sucks. And there we go, the military is fully Franco-aligned. Oh, that's what we like to see. You gotta be smart with what we do here. And oh, oh man, this takes forever to build. The current budget is zero. But hey, at least we're trying to help help the workers out. Military debate standard equipment. With the state of the Iberian army out of the way, the time has come to renew the oh boy, uh, army equipment. Since the end of the Great War, or the Second Great War, Spain's military weapon providers were Germany and Italy, and with the formation of the Iberian Union, it's clear that Spain cannot keep relying on Germany despite the success of the BAL program of 1943. However, Italy is not in the best position to continue supplying an unequipped army, and many officers from both sides uh, have stated their opinions on the subject, and with the two major groups coming out on top in discussions. One of them advocates for the continuation of Italian weapon imports for as long as they can be relied on, and switching to another major weapon producer if necessary. And another faction advocating for the expansion of the other small Spanish arms industry, mainly based around small-time workshops, Rather than full-blown companies for now, as the Cadillos analyze their options, it is clear that continuing imports it's, is its simplest and cheapest solution. Let's hope the Italians still have the guns on the cheap. Oh, we can do this as well. Oh, boy. Well, ooh, the church actually leans towards us, which is good, but colonial settlers. And support for failing coastal ventures. Um, well, we already got enough support here earlier, so I guess we might as well do that. I don't know if it's good to do all that stuff. Maybe it is, maybe it's not. I really don't know. But we have Lords of Arabia, which is great. Delhi and Calcutta, we want to definitely do that, but let's sever ties with our ex-allies. It's come to the time that we need to remove all links with our previous alliance partners. Following the collapse of the Triumvirate, previously masked tensions have flared up, showing that Italy and Turkey are always seeking to further their own goals rather than joining a unified challenge to the German-European hegemony. We must, hence, sever previous ties that hold us together, whether they be cultural or institutional. Along these ties, persist would leave us in a vulnerable position, ready to be exploited by the unscrupulous Italians and Turks. The Saudis. Riyadh, a relatively small city in some ways that make it look nice while created for functioning elsewhere. While Franco learned what uh, was that much like Iberia itself, midday was hot, seemingly hostile to life. There was no place fit for staying outside in for sure, as he took some time off in a siesta. For a siesta, inside a formal environment, the people were as warm as the environment outside, various affairs as tedious as they were humorous, filled the day's schedule for far too long for Franco to properly enjoy the day. As the day rages on, there's still time to prepare the greatest meeting of the evening. Saudi oil would undoubtedly be a worthwhile trade, and discussing business in depth would help securing an advantageous deal. However, relations could be improved by the classic tactic. Flattery. By praising their monarchy, even things could warm up between the leadership of both the Saudis and Iberia. Business? Okay, so, about oil. There's going to be an oil crisis later on. Uh, I don't know. I mean, being on good relations with them would be really good. 
Oh, worse than the church opinion of the Franco. Oh, 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 I don't like that. I don't like that. Uh, just go and do that. Oh, oh man, I want to. I want their oil, man. I really do, because we we're actually out of fuel as we we're trying to train ships, which isn't ideal. We can only get minus two thirty a day, so. <laughs> it is what it is. Point two four though is not too bad. Hey, another division, great. Military debate, drill sergeant language. With the many attempts at standardizing the army drills, a major issue has been brought up by the Cadillos. The many recruits don't speak the same language as their squad mates from different regions. This has sparked a debate on whether or not soldiers should be split into squads from the same region with separate drill instructors. With the support of Salazar, we're trying to maintain and reinforce the current system, which tries to force bilingualism down to, to a squad level, which is advocated by Franco after his attempts of unifying the culturally diverse Spanish army during the Spanish Civil War. As neither treats or seems to bulge on their position, it seems that the status quo will likely continue. Which is okay. Alright, so now we can decry Italian encroachment, which probably would be a good thing to do. Uh, let's see. Add three million dollars to the budget. You know what? Let's go and do that. They're upset. Uh, we'll get both. Reduce maintenance of the dam. That might not be bad. Uh, reduce the cost. Let's see. Maintenance cost. That's a lot. Yeah, maybe we we'll want to do that first. <sighs> Speak out against Algerian separatism. Oh, uh, let's see. So that's a natives. Natives don't care, though. This is foreign leaders, but and foreign leaders don't really care. Regional nationalists? Uh, the decry Italian encroachment. Why not? Actually, we need to build more stuff. Road construction complete! Great! So, finally, after many in in incidents and delays, the proposed road in outer Madrid is now usable. This will be the first stepping stone in providing Iberia with a logistical infrastructure system that will bring the half peninsula the capabilities to flex its eager muscles on the international market. One question remains, however. Who will open it and who will be named after it? They may this may not be an easy decision to make. And let's do one thing down here. Uh, we can piss them off some more. Upgrade the cranes. I kind of like that. Hire more technicians. Let's go and do that. But we're going to end that episode here. So let me know in the comments below. Helping Italy or Turkey, does it really affect... Whether or not we could save the Federation, I don't know. If you have experience with this, please let me know. Obviously, we don't want to worsen the businessmen's opinions of Franco. But at the same time, this seems like it doesn't give us any negative penalties. But regardless, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, consider leaving a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. And I'll see you tomorrow as we shall break up the rest and attempt to do the best that we can for the Union. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.